In this tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how you can manually trace over a bitmap image to create the vectors that you can see here. So let's just go to File, Close. So we'll start by going to Create a new file. Here we're working with a single-sided job. We're going to give this a width of 11 inches and a height of 7 inches. And then our material thickness is going to be three quarters of an inch. And then we'll just set our XY date and position in the lower left hand corner. And then we could go ahead and press OK. So the first thing we need to do is import our bitmap data in order for us to trace from. So to do that, the top of your drawing tab, you're going to go into this option here to import a bitmap. And then from the project folder, you can see we have a usbuckle.jpg file. So then we'll just take this and then we're going to go and alter the size of that. So in transform objects, we're going to use this option here to set our object size. We're going to alter the width of that so it's 10 inches wide. We'll use this option to link XY. And what that means is that whatever we do here, it's going to scale the height in proportion to the width. I could go ahead and press apply. So we'll just close out there. So we've got our bitmap ready for us to start tracing. So typically when we want to trace an object, we go into the trace bitmap tool. And this tool enables us to uh, trace or fit vectors to various colors within your job. So you have the option to choose colors or if you're working with a black and white image, you can use the black and white option. As we're currently working with a colored image, we're going to use the color option. And then we have a number of colors that we can fit our vectors to. So it's currently showing 16 colors here and you can simply select them. And you, you'll see that when I select them in the 2D view, we're displayed with uh, red areas. And these red areas would represent um, where our vectors would be fitted to. And not only that, we can also double click in the 2D view to select those colors as well. And you can see because of the quality of this image, because we're working with kind of yellow, gold, brown image, um, we've got lots of different colors in there. We're not really gonna get a good trace using this tool. This would be uh, better for more bold colors, um, where there's just kind of single bold colors in view, not necessarily lots of different shades of a particular color here. So we're actually going to um, give this one a miss. And we'll close out of there. And we're going to look at how we can trace this manually. So we're going to look at some of the vector drawing tools that we've got in the software. So to start with, what I would like to do is I'd like to alter the fading of our bitmap so I can see that a little better in order for me to actually trace some of the items that we've got in here. So to do that, just simply select your bitmap using the left mouse key and then using the right mouse click key, you want to guide yourself to object properties. And then here we can look at decreasing the fade or you could increase it if you wanted to. In this case, we just wanna just decrease that so you can see that a little more clearly now. Uh, might as well just take that all the way to 0%. And then we can simply close out. So we'll start by drawing an ellipse to create the border of the US buckle sign. So to do that, we can simply come over to create vectors. I'm going to use this tool here, which is which enables us to create an ellipse. So here we can specify the size and height and where we're positioning that um, within our job. Or we could just simply come over into the 2D view and just draw that out manually ourselves. So here you can see I'm just snapping to the center of my job. And then I'm just going to drag that out over to the right hand side and then drag it down. And you'll see that it's creating that ellipse for me and we can Go ahead and just let go when we're happy with that. Okay, so that looks okay if we just close out. And then if we go to our layers bar at the top here, we can just switch off the visibility of the bitmap layer to take a look at what we've got. So it doesn't exactly match up to the image, but it's a pretty good um, 
representation of that. If we wanted to, you could tweak it um, by taking that and then just maybe moving that down so it matches closely to what we have here. Um, or you could just uh, leave it as it is. So I think we'll just take this one here as well and we'll just drag that up. And you can see pretty much everywhere else is pretty much the same shape as what we've got in our image. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at creating the text. Now we don't have a font that matches this so we're going to have to again look at how we can manually trace the letter U and the letter S that we've got in this image here. We're going to look at using the polyline tool. So the polyline tool can be located under the create vectors section and it's this icon here and if we click on that that will open up the create a line or polyline where we can then create our lines. So you can create lines by entering uh, specific points to where you want your line to begin from in terms of the um, x and y coordinates or we can just come over and actually draw them out using our mouse. So we're going to do that. So we're going to start by looking at the letter U to begin with. So the idea is we want to basically follow along uh, with the shapes that we are seeing um, within this image. So we're going to start by, let's have a look at this point here. Okay, so I'm going to click that into position. Now you'll notice that I have a smart snapping switched on which is really going to help me in this case because the software is going to be able to pull out different guidelines where it will think is useful for me to follow along. So you can see already we have a horizontal line that has appeared and that just ensures that I'm going to have a nice horizontal line that I can follow along to and then I can just click when I want to finish that and you'll see it's just created that line for us. So now I can create the next sign. So again, I'm going to go up and you can see I have a handy vertical guide uh, thanks to the smart snapping that I'm going to follow along to. And I'm just going to click that in position. And again, we're going to follow along that horizontal and then click to accept that. I'm going to bring that down. Now you can see um, because of smart snapping, the guide has pulled up, oh hold on, we're gonna, you can finish here if you want and that will be in line with your first point or your first line that you created. So would you like to stop here? Yes I would. So I'm just going to click here. And then we're going to go across again, we've got that horizontal line that's just keeping us guided horizontally. So we're going to click in there and then we can bring that down. So we'll just click somewhere around here. And then I'm just going to jump straight to this halfway point here where this U has a bend. Okay, and we're going to look at how we can create the curvature afterwards. So we're just going to click in position here and then we're going to click in position somewhere over here. And again, you can see I've got a handy guide here telling me that we're lined up um, in line with the previous point. So we could go ahead and click there. And then we could go up and again we want to, you can see I haven't got a guide here telling me that we're going to line up to the line there. So to wake up a guide, let's just take our cursor and we're just going to just hover over this point and then we're going to come out to the right and you can see we've got the guide there. So we're just waking that guide up. So you may need to go over to uh, various points that you've already made to kind of wake up the guide in order for you to follow, follow that guideline. And then we can click that and then come over to the left, click up here and you can see it's already picked up the guide on the top there. So it's telling us we're in line horizontally with the line we've created previously, which is this one over here. So we want to we want to keep that in line just so it all uh, just looks from a visual point of view. It's all in line with each other and go over to the right and then we'll just click in position there come down and then hopefully we can wake that line up. So we'll just take that point, bring that over, click in position, click over here. And then we're just going to come down to somewhere around there. We're going to click somewhere around here, straight line that to around there. And then if we can, we'll try and line that back up over there by waking that point up and then dragging along and then click to accept that 
and then we want to snap that back up into position there so we're just going to click that in place and there we have one created vector so the moment you join the vector you can then go ahead and start a new vector if you wanted to and so we'll do that now so whilst we're just in the polyline tool we'll continue with the s and then we'll look at how we can perfect um the vectors that we've got here for the U is we're working with straight lines everywhere and we need to transform them so that we turn them into Bezier curves so that we closely match the original image. So over here we're going to look at uh, starting in position over here okay so we're going to click that and then we're just going to line that up again so you can see we've got that horizontal guide telling us we're in line with the top of the U perfect so we're going to click on that point come over and then click down and click over to the left and click and you can see we've um, we've got a guide there telling us that we're in line with our original start point which is nice so we can click that and then we can come over here so um, what we can do is we can also make use of creating a uh, curved lines whilst in the polyline tool and so all we need to do is just press um, shift whilst we do that so if we take that and hold down shift you can see that I'm able to create curves okay which is really handy if I wanted to zoom in I can just use the scroll of my mouse to do that and again you can see I've got this curve here and then holding down shift I can just basically pull on those handles to really alter the curvature and we're just carrying on around like so just pulling whilst I've got the shift key held down on the point and then you can just kind of line that up we'll get to around here and we're just gonna let go of the shift key I'm not gonna hold down the shift anymore because now we're going to create straight lines. So you can see I have the guide there at the bottom. That's telling me, yep, you're in line with the bottom of the U that we've just created, perfect. So let's just carry on with that. And then we'll go up, over to the right. And then what we're going to do now is we're gonna go back and look at using the curve again. So we're just gonna hold down shift for my next point. And then you can see we can start to create some curvature is super handy as you're able to then create the curves whilst also creating straight lines as well so there's no need to go in afterwards to edit it however we will in this example because there are some areas that might need fixing for example this area here as well as this part here as well so again hold down shift just to do that now, if there was something, this is a time that you came across where actually you didn't like what you just did, you can just simply press the backspace key on the keyboard and it will just take you back a few points. So again, let's just do that and you'll see it's just taking me back, which is really handy uh, because I'm able to just kind of... Uh, refocus myself and get back to where I wanted to uh, to then correctly create all the next line or the next curve okay so let's go over here and just hold down shift and we'll just pop that like so and then over here I'll shift that in place and then we'll just join that up over there okay so if we press F on the keyboard so let's come out of the polyline tool. So now what we need to do is we need to look at editing the vectors that we've just created using the polyline tool to better fit the shapes that we're tracing. So we wanna make the bottom of the U uh, curved, there's some areas on the S that need altering. And so to do any of these sorts of things, we need to go into node edit mode. So node edit mode, simply come over here, click on that, your mouse is now in node edit mode, so you can click on a vector and you'll see that it will just basically uh, show all of the nodes that make up those vectors. And this is where we can really control what, what it is that we want to do to those vectors to, to better alter the shape of them. For example, let's just take a look at the U to begin with. So you can see we've got these two nodes here, they're a bit far out over to the right compared to what we've got in the image. So we want to just nudge them over to the left. 
So to do that, because I need to select two nodes, I need to select this one and this one, I'm going to box select and to drag over those two nodes so that they're within the selection, let go and you'll see that they're now highlighted. And then using the left arrow key, I can just nudge them over like so. If we take a look at the bottom, you can see we have a series of straight lines. Now we've got curves in the image, so we need to also make curves here. Now before I do that, I can see that this node is far out to the left compared to this node here. And I'd actually like to line this one up to this node here. So to do that, select the node you want to line up to, like so, and then shift and select the node you want to move, and then on the keyboard, if you want to align it in the X axis, press X, and you can see it would do that there. If you wanted to align it to Y, you'd press the Y button on the keyboard. Okay, so this stage, we want to alter these straight lines to turn them into curves so that it matches the actual curvature of the bottom of the letter U. So to do that, we can right click on this span here. So the span is the line between two nodes. And we can say, let's make that Bezier. So now you've got these handles. And if I pull on a handle, you can see it will alter the curvature. And then I can take this handle and we'll just move that over. So you can see that I actually line them up uh, parallel to um, the X or the Y axis of the current node that we're actually working with. So lined it up like so, so it's in line with the node and that just keeps it all nice so that the vector flows through vertically down and then it just curves off nicely and then it goes horizontally into this node here. Okay, so we'll show that again over this side. So right click on the span to Bezier and take the handle, just drag that down and then drag that one over so it's in line uh, vertically there. Okay, another way to do this is we could right click and say to Bezier and then if we zoom in what we could do is we could just actually take the line like so and then move that over and again Bezier or we could simply press B on the keyboard that's the shortcut key to turn that into a Bezier in which we can then go ahead and move that around. See we have a straight point here, so we could take that and then right click and say we want to smooth that point so it's smooth and you can see we have a nice smooth curvature there at the bottom of the uh, letter U. If we just press F to fit that and then just click out so we don't see all of those nodes, you can see we have a much better uh, fitting of the actual shape that we're following. Obviously it is a little out compared to the image but we are trying to keep it more in line with the nodes that we've created and you can see that looks pretty good. So the S isn't too bad however I just want to just clean up this part here and that part there. So to do that I'm just going to click on that as we're in node edit mode and then what we can do is just zoom in. I'm just going to take that handle and then using the right arrow key, just nudge that over. I'm also going to take this handle over here just to stretch that out a little. So you can see we've got a much better um, curve there. Perfect. And then over at the bottom here, we can just take that and just bring that down like so. And I think that's pretty much it for the F. So if we press on the F key to fit that to our screen and then we'll just go into normal selection mode there. We'll just click out of there. So if we go to our layers bar at the top, if we just switch off the visibility of our bitmap layer, you can see we've got some nice curves there within our S shape. We've got nice curvature at the bottom there for our U. Everything kind of lines up with each other and that's a pretty good job. So at this stage, what we'd do is go ahead and would save this file. So go to File, Save As, and then in the Project folder, we'll just call this one US Buckle Vector Drawing. Press Save and then you can access that from the Project folder. So you've seen how to manually trace bitmaps in the software using the Polyline tool. And this tool is demonstrated throughout many of the drawing tutorials, which will link you to some of those in the related videos section for this tutorial.